I would like to invite Dr. Sara Khan uh, for her speech on ALS outcome of multidisciplinary care. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Um, uh, just a slight change in schedule um, as we wait for the speakers to come. So I'll start the conference out. It is a pleasure to be talking about uh, this topic, which is very close to my heart and something that I've been working on um, for the pa past couple of years. So. We'll be discussing just a, a very short definition of ALS as a disease. We'll discuss uh, evidence about the importance of uh, multidisciplinary care, and then I'll talk about our experience here at AKU with the multidisciplinary clinics. So uh, as we all know, ALS is it's a spectrum of disorders uh, which can involve varying degrees of upper and lower motor neuron dysfunction. And cl classic ALS has both upper motor neuron as well as anterior horn cell degeneration. Five to, only 5 to 10 percent of these are going to be familial and till now about 14 genes have been identified, but 90 percent are going to be sporadic. The interval between symptom onset and the time ALS is diagnosed is approximately 15 months, so, that, so over a year. And this is very important because during this time, more than half of the motor neuron pool has already degenerated. So also with um, progressive research, we now know that this is not just an, uh, a motor neuron disorder. It's not just anterior horn cell or upper motor neuron degeneration. More and more research is showing in, uh, central nervous system involvement. In a study done, done by Murphy et al. in 2007, um, which was the first time it was described, 22% had frontotemporal dementia, 17% had behavioral disorders, and 10% had cognitive problems. And these can start uh, can start later on, but can also be present from, from the beginning and be uh, recognized much later. So because of this, because now we know that this is a um, multi-system neurological disorder, multidisciplinary care for ALS is extremely important. And uh, the single greatest advance in the management of patients of ALS is the formation of these specialized multidisciplinary clinics. Multiple studies have shown that attendance at a specialist multidisciplinary clinic not only improves quality of life, but it also improves the duration of life. Now, a population-based study first, which was done in Ireland in 2003, uh, showed that patients, ALS patients who attended a multidisciplinary clinic lived an average of 7.5 months longer than those who received regular uh, medical care uh, just with a neurologist. The one-year mortality was reduced by nearly 30%, and this is comparable to the reduction in mortality seen with Rilozol in uh, clinical trials. So Rilozol reduction was about 38.6%, and this compared at 30%. So um, again, this has been uh, shown again in, in multiple studies. The, in uh, Chow et al. in 2006 showed that the median survival time was longer um, in patients with ALS followed in tertiary ALS centers. And attending a tertiary ALS center was an independent positive prognostic factor. They had fewer unplanned uh, hospitalizations as well as a much better quality of life. They also had a better mental quality of life, so they had better, better mental health, uh, better behavioral uh, understanding of behavioral issues and control of behavioral issues, and social functioning. Now, uh, according to, uh, this is the last recommendation by the American Academy of Neurology, any ALS multidisciplinary clinic uh, needs to look at all these measures. These are the measures that we need to look at with, in the clinic. It is a total of 11 measures, and this includes um, cognitive and behavioral, respiratory, speech and swallow, nutritional support, uh, to invasive or non-invasive uh, non uh, ventilation, and end of life planning assistance, as well as social support. So all of these measures have to be taken into account when planning a multidisciplinary clinic. And the purpose of these measures is ultimately these outcomes. And the outcomes are that there's coordination, care coordination between multiple uh, uh, caregivers, uh, enhancing the quality of life, slowing the progression of disease, minimizing their symptoms, educating the patients and their families, avoiding emergent uh, hospitalizations, and uh, reducing the overall um, hospitalizations and avoiding emergent advanced care planning so that a decision is not made at the last minute uh, 
about uh, end of life care so a multidisciplinary care uh, a team needs to have a lot of specialists involved and that includes the neurologist a nurse speech and language pathologist nutritionist occupational therapist physiotherapist respiratory therapist neuropsychologist social worker and research coordinator so as you can see it's a very um a, a big project to try to bring all of these specialists together in one clinic these clinics are very expensive to create and to maintain and the, in the US uh, alone the ALS association and the muscular dystrophy association provide financial support for for these clinics and despite the positive effect of multidisciplinary clinics which has been shown in studies only 45% of the patients will with ALS will ever set foot in a multidisciplinary care and this is in the US so even in the US where there are multiple multidisciplinary centers a very small proportion 45% patients just end up, end up in a multidisciplinary center again these are very expensive um, and even in the US where they have insurance and they have uh, pr financial support uh, these are very difficult to run so this brings uh, me to our experience here at AKUH um, it, the, it took approximately two years for our plan to materialize uh, we formulated an ALS pathway based on AN, ANEM and ALS foundation guidelines um, for copyright reasons I was not able to I can just quickly show you the document just for the pathway which is uh, what I made for for the clinic um, it includes the a ALS functional rating scale which the patient themselves or the family member with the family members help uh, fill it out we are able to follow this score uh, through uh, over time to see how the patient is doing uh, we have a neurological examination form then we have a cognitive behavioral sc screen which is used by the neuropsychiatrist we have um, and then we have the nutrition assessment physiotherapy assessment and um, in the end an, an ALS management plan which we decide as a team this is our ALS team it's coordinated and, and I am very lucky that I have group of self-motivated uh, personnel who want to do this themselves um, none of us are gaining anything from this uh, but all of us are really interested and enthusiastic about running running this clinic and all of us offer our free uh, our free time relatively to this clinic so Harun is um, our, the main guy who organizes everything I'm the neurologist we have Nadia as uh, the speech pathologist we have a nutritionist occupational therapist physical therapist respiratory therapist and we have Dr. Murtaza Kazmi who's a pulmonologist on standby always there to help us uh, if need be and a neuropsychologist which is uh, Dr. Kurat Khan we don't have a social worker um, uh, in our group but what uh, what I do is uh, I talk to them about end-of-life care uh, myself and uh, try to bring them on board again this clinic uh, as you saw in the pathway we look at all these measures and address all these measures as recommended by the American uh, Academy of Neurology um, in the clinic so after a successful pilot clinic in January 2017 finally our first clinic was held in 13 September on 13 September and uh, we ha it's a once monthly uh, once a month clinic um, so far we've just been able to see 10 patients so from September to now we've had one clinic per month a total of 10 patients uh, most of them have come from Karachi interior Sindh and uh, some from Islamabad uh, this is our a ALS team in action we have the physiotherapy uh, physiotherapist Arsalan is Farhan doing physiotherapy this is our respiratory therapist within the clinic we have a uh, pulmonary function tests um, and this is uh, our nutritionist giving nutritional advice and at the end um, this is Nadia our speech and uh, language uh, uh, therapist at the end we have an ALS team meeting where we discuss each patient and formulate a plan and if our, our plan is any different from what had already been discussed with the patient and family I usually call them back uh, the same day or the next day to let them know that this is what the team has advised so what are our limitations here um, at AKU um, or in Pakistan actually and the biggest limitation is cost this uh, the, whole, the one visit costs um, 
about 17,000 uh, 17, rupees. It's a huge sum, sum to pay for somebody in one go. Um, we do try to keep telling them that you'll be seeing seven specialists in this one clinic visit, um, but we have difficulty convincing patients. Patients distrust symptomatic treatment, okay? We're not offering, we've just given them one medication which was already started, and they distrust um, us saying that you're not intervening, we can do still you know, physiotherapy and occupational therapy, but you're not doing anything to our disease, and they don't understand um, uh, the importance of multidisciplinary care. There's lack of awareness about multidisciplinary care amongst the patients as well as physicians, and, and, and my hope is that over time uh, we will be able to increase that. Just from my own clinic, my own personal clinic, uh, I identified 25 ALS motor neuron disease patients, of these 25 who were approached, only six ultimately agreed uh, to attend the clinic. And two of these came back after multiple uh, external neurology reviews. And three of the patients were from outside referrals. So I even have difficulty convincing my own patients for this clinic. The advantages are that all patients and families uh, who have attended have had extremely positive reviews. Uh, by the end of the clinic, they have a much better understanding of what the disease is. They are more positive by the end of the clinic because now they're going home with a set plan of how to deal uh, with everyday issues. It often connects, uh, it, it not often, every time, connects the patients and their families to the caregivers. So now all of us individually are approachable whenever an issue arises. It serves as a support group, and I, I saw this happening in, in front of me. We had two ALS patients side by side, uh, one who was fairly advanced and had already a PEG tube in place and was doing very well, and one who was relatively new and just starting the process, and extreme, the family and the patient, uh, extremely anxious, did not want, didn't understand or want a PEG tube. We made the two families talk to each other, and uh, which was which was great for both families and served as a support group for both of them. And there's a clear benefit to the patients, uh, even though I don't have any numbers. Uh, we just had ten patients. Um, the patients who uh, uh, I'll just compare one bulbar onset ALS to another. The one who attended multidisciplinary care, we were able to uh, bring his weight up, we were able to maintain his weight. We already know that if there's more than 10% weight loss in an ALS patient, that is associated with poor prognosis. So we were able to stabilize him. And as opposed to another one of my patients who had um, very rapid decline, unfortunately ended up with an aspiration pneumonia because we weren't able or the family wasn't ready to um, take multidisciplinary care. So that is about it. This is just our experience here, and I hope that it increases uh, the awareness of multidisciplinary care, not just in ALS, in other chronic disorders such as muscular dystrophy or spinal muscular atrophy. All of these need multidisciplinary care, and we have the capability to set it up uh, in our um, institutions and should work towards that because we're not offering them any um, uh, definitive treatment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sara. Uh, if anyone has any question, kindly we can have the question session now regarding this speech. That they want to go to China for stem cell therapy. A lot of my patients, there is right. some marketing campaign going on. Yes. Someone who seeks out for ALS patients and they are offer them that there is a stem cell treatment available in China. Right. So is there any data on uh, this uh, stem cell treatment? Uh, is it effective right. or not? And uh, what we should do if people are there? Yeah. We go to China for stem cell so, so this is a huge problem, uh, not only China, India, and now we have one in Karachi. We have a stem cell center in Karachi called Khalij, I think, Al Khalij. So um, lots of referrals for this, and they've been uh, given stories that uh, there's complete recovery. There is no data in humans yet that uh, stem cell uh, is effective for ALS. Lots of research going on. There are mouse model studies, and there are uh, some studies in dogs. Uh, which have not yet proven that it's beneficial. So not no one is recommending stem cells right now. Um, patients still go. They still uh, go. They get it done, spend all their money on that. They much rather spend money on stem cells um, than they would 
on a multidisciplinary care. Good morning, Craig. Thank Thank you. Congratulations on your clinic and talk. I have two questions, if I may. What is the preferred um, place uh, for the terminal phase? Is it to, is the desire to try to remain at home and die at home or, or, or in the hospital? And do you have any palliative care um, uh, support in, in hospitals? First question. The second question, just about is there an ALS uh, registered in Pakistan to understand the patterns of disease nationally? Right. So uh, thank you, Dr. Craig. So f to the first question, the preference is home. Um, we, uh, we don't have the facilities here uh, in hospital, especially even in our tertiary care centers for long-term care. Uh, what we do end up doing uh, is over time giving them pa um, education about palliative care at home. Um, and that's an one very important reason that this uh, these kinds of clinics become very important because if the, these patients are not following up in clinic and suddenly there's there's decline or respiratory distress and they end up intubated ventilated somewhere um, families usually don't want to make the decision um, to withdraw and now we have an ALS patient on a ventilator and the decision to um, take them off the ventilator they take it as a personal decision that they're uh, facilitating. Uh, the death of death of the patient. The general rule is um, uh, peg placement. We don't go for uh, tracheostomies; just non-invasive ventilation at home. For the second question, no, we don't have an ALS registry yet. Um, I hope to get there. Um, I've just started working on a spinal muscular atrophy and a dystrophy registry, and hopefully in future we'll have uh, an ALS registry. Thank you.